Amen. Amen. Shall we please take our seats? May the grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied to you this morning. We want to thank God for this opportunity to worship with you. I want to thank my dear brother and apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, Apostle Johnny, for inviting me to be part of this blessing. And my own brother, Edayal, and my sister, Portia, Sam, and all of you. Yeah, I see Fuga over there, yeah. I see a lot of you in there. And I see Nana over there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God bless you, amen. amen. This morning, we want to listen to the word of God briefly, and we enter into a time of prayer. I know God has been so gracious in those 21 days of fasting and prayer. But this morning, God is going to do something special in your life. Yes. And I want you to trust God. That if there is anything left, you are living here this morning with victory. Amen. Somebody shout grace. grace. Oh, shout another grace. grace. I want to speak briefly on the topic, double grace for your mountain. Yeah. Somebody say double grace, double grace. For, my for my mountain. Say it again. Grace. Oh, third time. Double, double grace. grace. Hallelujah. I want to read from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1 to 9. Then the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is waking out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bow on top of it. And understand seven lambs with seven pipes to the seven lambs. Two olive trees are by it. One at the right of the bow and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know? Do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Said the Lord of hosts, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Somebody say grace, grace. grace, grace. Moreover, the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel laid this foundation of this temple. This hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Hallelujah. Christianity is a very distinct from all other religions. The reason is that it carries the message of grace. And Jesus Christ is the supreme revelation of God's grace. The Bible says that, and of his fullness, we have received grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace governs and empowers Christian living. And without grace, Christianity is nothing. Without grace, we are believed in vain. Without grace, there is nothing we can do. So the anchor of Christianity is on grace. And this morning, I pray, as we climb us those 21 days of fasting and prayer, may you live here with double grace. Yeah. Scripture gives us numerous kinds of grace. I know because of those 21 days, you heard most of them. And we have common grace that talks about God showing his love to all mankind without any discrimination. The Bible says that he makes his son rise 
on the evil and on the good. And send rains on the just and the unjust. That is common grace. Everybody receive it. Whether you believe in God, whether you don't believe in God, you receive this common grace. Because when it rains, you also enjoy it. That is a common grace. And there is a saving grace. The saving grace is what Christ did for us on the cross. So the Bible says that for by grace we have been saved through faith. And this is not from ourselves, but it's for, from the gift of God. Grace is done, done, done. Christ did it. It's done. On the cross, he said that it's finished. And it's finished. You are saved. Tell somebody I'm saved. I'm saved. Yes. He did it on the cross and he said it's finished. So that is what we call the saving grace. Then we have what we call the justifying grace. The Bible says in Romans 3, 24, that being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God sees you as if you have not sinned. You are justified freely, just as if. This morning, no matter what you have done, you have been justified because of grace. That is the justifying grace. Maybe you mess up somewhere, but I'm here to tell you that you are not a mess. Maybe you failed, but you are not a failure. You sin, but you are not a sinner. Because you are justified by grace. Hallelujah. You know, Satan will always accuse you. Satan will make you feel that you are good for nothing. You don't deserve the grace of God. But the Bible says that who can bring a charge against the elect of God? You are an elect of God. There is no condemnation against you. This morning, if there is any condemnation against you because of grace, it will be wiped off. Wiped off. Who can bring charge against God's elect? Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is at the right hand of God, who also make intercessions for us. Hallelujah. You see, we have two divine intercessions. Intercessors. Two divine intercessors. When you read Romans chapter 8, it talks about the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he helps us in our weaknesses. Even how we pray, we don't know. But he intercedes for us. In this prayer of 21 days of grace, may you be connected to divine intercessors. He says that he intercedes for us. So the Spirit of God intercedes for us. And not only that, we have Jesus Christ who has ascended to the right hand of God and he is also interceding for us. So that when there is any condemnation against us, Jesus is able to justify us. Then there is another level of grace called the teaching grace. The teaching grace, it says in the book of Titus that for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no. Somebody say no. May you receive the grace to say no. You see, grace is not only unmerited favor, but grace is also God's ability. And I pray that this morning, may you receive that ability. He says that it teaches us to say no to ungodliness, to worldly passion, and to live self-control, upright, and godly life in this present age. It's not easy. You know, the saints that used to practice closed doors in those days, they are all now parading on our streets unashamed. So in this generation, it's not easy. There are certain things you have to go and hide before you can do it. But now, it's just on your face. And I pray that this morning, God will give you grace. So that you can say no. Somebody say no. no. Receive ability this morning. Oh, as you say no, receive ability this morning. Receive grace. Double grace. If there is anything that is confronting you, if there is anything that wants to bring you down, this morning, may you receive, receive grace. It says that it gives us 
the ability to say no. Grace is connected to holiness, righteousness, and godliness. Teaching grace controls us from what we call whateverism. Yes, whatever. Like you want to do whatever you want. You want to be a believer and still do whatever you want. You can do that. Whateverism. This morning, may you receive teaching grace. You cannot be in Cap City and be a whateverism believer. Hallelujah. May God give you grace this morning. And there is another grace known as the enabling grace or the sufficient grace. Enabling grace or sufficient grace. Paul said that three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you, but for my power is made perfect in weakness. The grace that make you deal with things that can break others. The things that can crush others. When you have that grace, you'll be able to survive. God is a God of all grace. And this morning, may you receive double grace for your mountain. You see, the grace of God is inexhaustible. The psalmist says that the river of God has plenty of water. No matter how you tap into the grace of God, it will never deplete. It will never finish. As many times you come to God, grace is still available. So Paul says that I prayed three times, but God says my grace is sufficient. Whatever you are going through this morning, may you receive sufficient grace in the name of Jesus. Receive sufficient grace. My grace. Where people cannot go because of grace, you will go there. Where people will not survive because of grace, you will survive. Where people cannot make it, you will make it because of grace. Because you carry sufficient grace. Somebody shout sufficient grace. Oh, I can't feel it. Sufficient grace. Oh, can you be on your feet and shout sufficient grace? And say a big amen to that. Now, in a passage that we read, we'll be bringing it very quickly. God showed to Zachariah that his grace is sufficient for every mountain. He carries grace inexhaustible. He carried grace to accomplish every task. So in a vision, what was revealed, you know, when they had returned from captivity, they were trying to uh, rebuild the temple. And you know, because they came from slavery, captivity, they could not gather as much resources like the resources Solomon gathered and, uh, to build that temple. So in the first place, the temple that they were trying to build will not match the standard of what Solomon built. So when you read the book of uh, Ezra, it says that the day they laid the foundation of the temple, the new generation, those who have not seen the other temple, they were shouting and shouting and shouting, praising God. But the older generation who saw the temple that Solomon built, they were crying. Because the standard was not as what Solomon did. And the shouting and the crying was just messed up together so you cannot recognize whether it's crying or shouting. And the Bible says that the shout went very far. I pray, oh, this morning, may the Lord give you grace that will take you very far. It will take you to a very far destination. Hallelujah. So, as they were building, they lacked resources. And at the same time, politically, they were forced to stop. Meanwhile, what they are building, they are even struggling. And God has to give Zechariah this vision. And he says that in a vision... He saw a lampstand of solid gold and a bow to it. So the lampstand was there. There was a bow connected to it. That wasn't all. 
And there were, there were two olive trees beside the bowl. Trying to tell Zerubbabel or Zechariah that God's grace is sufficient and is inexhaustible. When the oil in the lamb stand get depleted, it's connected to a bow above it. And when that bow even finishes, we have the two olive trees. It will never. The grace of God for you will never go dry. This morning I pray, may you tap into the double grace of God to move every mountain in your life. Then he goes on to say that, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? This is a question of defiance. This morning we're going to defy every mountain that is against you. Every mountain that is against your ministry. Every mountain that is against this church. Any mountain that is against your marriage, against your education, against your business, against your children. We are here to defy them in the name of Jesus. Because you carry grace. You see, the Bible says that the righteous is as bold as a lion. Because when you carry grace, you are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. This morning, may you receive grace to be bold as a lion. So that you can defy anything that rises against you. Grace for your mountain. Double grace. Who are you? Oh, great mountain. Before Zerubbabel. Mountains are hard and difficult problems in life. This life is not free. Christianity is not easy, as you see. Maybe you've not encountered any mountain so far, but I'm here to tell you that there will be a mountain. You're not going to have an easy road. Things are not going to be so smooth for you. Sometimes you come to church, you pray and you praise God and as if everything is okay, but you go out there and you fix or you face that mountain. But as you are living here, you carry grace. May mountains become plain before you. Hallelujah. So he says that, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Mountains are things that obstruct our progress. Sometimes you want to go forward. You're trying to make it, but things are pulling you down. Sometimes you write some exams and you fail. I remember uh, I was taking a class in Greek, and I failed. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we got to be real. We all fail, but I'm not a failure. The fact that you fail doesn't mean that you are a failure. Then my daughter said, Dad, you got F. I said, yeah, I got F. <laughs> Me, I've told her, don't bring anything below C. <laughs> and I got F. But by the grace of God, I made it. Hallelujah. You make it. Mountains will show up. But this morning, may you receive double grace. Hallelujah. Now, the, the, the last thing we want to touch on here is that when the project has come to a stop and nothing was working, they have no hope of completing it. God comes into the picture and he says that this mountain must be a plain. And he said to Zerubbabel, shout grace, grace on the capstone. Now the capstone here is something special. In those days, it was the last stone that is laid for the completion of any project. So for him to say that shout grace, grace, Whilst the thing is at the foundation level, God was giving them a capstone. Maybe you're thinking, how am I going to do that? How am I going to complete this? How am I going to fix this? How am I going to live by this? How am I going to survive? How am I going to work? This business, how is it going to survive? This morning, God is giving you a capstone. Oh, I can't feel you. I said, God is giving you a capstone. Yeah. The Bible says that he knows the 
end from the beginning. May the Lord give you a capstone and may you begin to shout grace, grace. Oh, shout grace, grace. It means that it's done. I have the capstone. It's done. It's finished. The mountain cannot stop me because I have the capstone in my hands. This morning, as we climb on those 21 days of fast, may the Lord give you a capstone. Amen. Whatever you are praying to God for, whatever you are trusting God for in this year, this morning, may you receive that capstone. Amen. Elder said that so many things we pray about it, we may not have it right now. But God is going to give unto you. As you live here this morning, may you live with the capstone in your hands, signifying that it's done because of the grace of God. Shall we be on our feet?